in Kenya, January is known to be the hardest time of the year. This is because a lot of things happen during this time. And the obvious thing that everybody experiences are that, that of being super broke. <laughs> With no money to push you to the end of the month. All accounts become empty after extravagant spending during Christmas and New Year celebrations. Such is the time when I pray that nothing happens that requires another spending. Not many people marry and get married during this, this month. Some people even pray that their relatives postponed their death during January. <laughs> I was not lucky this time. My wife lost her aunt last Sunday and was just buried yesterday. So I had no choice but to spend the last dime that, I, that was at hand. January is also a time when schools will open after a long vacation. Parents have to pay school fees for their children as they head back to school. For those being admitted to high schools, which is the big, big, biggest deal because of the demands that go with the high school admissions, are very high. January is another long journey that we begin counting as we look towards December. It is here, 26, 26 days old. Of course, a new year comes with a lot of anxieties mixed with uncertainties. Sometimes we start the year with the exhausting baggage of the previous year, which we might not have been able to accomplish. Whenever we think of the failures and looking at our to-do lists that we had at the beginning of the year, and we find that almost half of it is not accomplished. Your projects are standing unattended to due to financial constraints. You have gone back to your general ground and realized that the past year has gone with the demise of so many of your family members. Maybe you have been asking for steady jobs for long but still not found one and another year is gone. These are just but a few challenges that cause us to wonder. What will this unknown year bring if you have not been able to realize in the, first, the past years the feeling of a fresh start with so many expectations from within and without results to fear? Leaving the known for the unknown comes with the question, if the known was unbearable, then what assurance do I have for me to venture into the unknown? Will the unknown offer us any alternative for them to cope with the situation? <coughs> and if the known was bearable, then will the unknown be better than the known? The psalmist, the psalmist of this 27th psalm declared, The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The psalmist was going through a difficult time and surrounded by enemies and people who did not think of the best for him. He was facing threats in his life. He faced people that were full of cruelty. Out of that situation, he realized that his self-righteousness mentality that, that was not was not going to help him. 
he confidently turned to God for help. Today, as the months, the month of the new year nears the end, this Psalm number 27 has three things that we can energize and begin each day with the strength of an eagle. The first thing is that God is telling us through the Psalm of number 27, do not fear. Have confidence in God. It is going to be okay. Fear is an enemy of faith and cannot allow any progress. Fear kills and destroys vision. Fear is an unpleasant feeling that is triggered by the perception of danger, real or imagined. It is distressing emotion aroused by impending danger, evil, pain, etc., whether the threat is real or imagined. Yes, fear can make even the heart of the strongest to melt. Fear, for a moment, can make you forget the successes of the past. This reminds me of the Israelites out of fear of Pharaoh and the Egyptians. They forgot all about God. The God who punished the Egyptians through the ten plagues, as they forgot about Moses through whom God had carried had carried out the plagues against the Egyptians. Yet, we forget the acronyms of the word fear. Fear is false evidence appearing real. Not all that we are afraid of is worthy fearing. If we have God on our side, with God in our team, with God being with us, it's going to be okay. The second point, move on no matter the threats. It's going to be okay. God is your protection and security. The psalmist goes on. He had very strong confidence, which could be the aftermath of having examined himself in the previous psalm. His faith became stronger after facing evildoers of his day, the people who planned and breathed fury to destroy him. They were likened to beasts of prey. They were hostile to him and could not find himself able to face them. It was at this point that the self-righteousness was replaced by the faith and confidence in God. The fear of destruction led him to have fear in God as the mighty one who will protect him from his enemies. Point number three, stay put, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> Having faith in God drives away the fear that might overwhelm our lives. Apostle Paul encouraged us when he prayed for the Romans. Through his prayer, he prayed, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. The psalmist also requested the favor of the Lord. The continuance of his presence with him and the benefit of divine guidance and the benefit of divine protection. Our faith is driven by hope. We hold on to our, hope, our, our faith in God with the knowledge that the risen Christ is with us, enabling us to, to be hopeful and expectant of the coming of God's kingdom. This kingdom of heaven that I am yearning for, it must begin within myself. 
faith as the overcoming of false fear. It can be the power to neutralize fear. Faith is the power to neutralize anxiety when confronting fellow human beings. We sometimes don't know how to keep our eyes on. We should remember that keeping our eyes on the problems magnifies the problems. We remember Peter as he kept his eyes on Jesus when, when they were in, in the sea. He was able to stand to his feet. But the moment his eyes focused on the blowing wind, he began to sink. As you start focusing on the problem that you are facing, it becomes magnified and overwhelming in your eyes. But remember that God is bigger than that problem. Never tell God how big the problem is. Rather, tell the problem how mighty your God is. Amen. Doubting your God only adds fuel to that fear. Two things am I here. That a person who has faith is always the one who trusts in someone stronger than him or her. As a child, as a child I trusted my parent and I was convinced that I was safe in my parents' love. As children of God, then where do we place our trust if not in God who is the Almighty? For those who place their trust in the mortal beings, Jeremiah had a strong message for them. When he said, cast at those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. For in no time they shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness, in an inhabited salt land. God is the one capable of protecting against all anxiety. Those who trust in the Lord are like a tree planted by the water, sending out its roots by the stream. Those who trust in the Lord are like the flower gardens during summertime. They are given enough water and they also receive enough sunshine. They blossom and become fruitful. As I conclude, God's time to help, uh, to help those that trust in Him is when all other helpers fail. God is a surer and better friend than earthly parents are or can be. What was the belief which supported the, uh, the psalmist? That he should see the goodness of the Lord. There is nothing like believing hope of eternal life, the, for, the foresight of that glory, and four tests of those pleasures to keep us from fainting under all calamities. In the meantime, he should be strengthened to bear up and under his burdens. Let us look unto the suffering Savior and pray in faith, not to be de de delivered into the hands of our enemies. Let us encourage one another to wait on the Lord with patient expectation and fervent prayer. Therefore, do not fear. God is, God is with us. Move, move on despite the threats. Stay put in the faith in God as, you, as we, we focus and keep our eyes on God. Amen. Amen. Amen.